if you nice. tap danced on it and kicked <laughs> it across the room, it would look you in the eyes and giggle. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source and Vince Stone joined every week by Jill mm -hmm. Bryan. Everybody watching this, we're just on Twitch today because I didn't have time to set up the YouTube thing because it's convoluted. <laughs> As YouTube is, yes. <laughs> it is, man. I was like, I, like do, I, do I get set up and do we do a pre-show or do we <laughs> set up YouTube and try to do that in the pre-show? So we decided just to be on Twitch today. Middle of the week, everybody mm -hmm. excited. Plenty of stuff to talk about. Lots of fun things. And uh, Jill, you're getting wound up over. Uh, it, it's a beautiful, by the way, this is a very special corporate holiday invented yes, by corporations is. to sell you products. Oh, yes. But it's, it's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to all our viewers. Me and Steve husband will be celebrating this weekend. And I, I because he's. He's working late today, so <laughs> we can't do Valentine's today, but me and him always do a little something. Usually we go out to eat. He sometimes buys me a gift. <laughs> there we and go. Like, I knew we were going to get to the crux of that situation. It like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful holiday. It's great. Sometimes I get a gift, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. You guys yes. got some uh, scale stuff coming up, though, right? OMG, Yes. So, yeah, like I, I said a few weeks ago, I'm getting ready and, you know, making preparations for our Linux Chicks LA booth at scale once again. And for all of you out there who would like to go to the Southern California Linux Expo, it's taking place March 14th through the 17th of this year at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. Woohoo! And you can use promo code CHIX or Chicks, short for Linux Chicks on the first page of registration to get 50% off your scale pass. And something really cool, the Linux Chicks LA and my Destination Linux Podcasting Blues are going to be next to each other, as well as next, next to Strider's Lutris booth. Woohoo! We got all three of us. <laughs> That's great. I was really excited about that. <laughs> it's going to be like, Yay. you know, a flock of seagulls, but with more nerds. Yes. See, the Lutris booth was near us last time, but this this time it says next to us. So right I'm very happy. Yeah. Oh, no. Poor Strider. Yeah. I feel for you. you <laughs> yeah. No, you guys have a fun time, won't you? Yes, absolutely. It's going to be, I'm going to be doing so much stuff. <laughs> so if you want to go check that out, I posted yeah. a link in chat, SoCalExpo.org. Yeah. Yeah, go check you, it man. out. Remember to use that mm -hmm. uh, promo code. Yeah. Get that 50% off. Right. Care of Linux chicks. <laughs> Do it right. Go ahead. Don't don't procrastinate. And no, it's in all of our natures. We're in IT. We're in tech. We we are born procrastinators as part of our DNA. But just oh, go ahead yeah. and do it. Get it and this year, out. the attendance is going to be way up. They've already had higher attendance, so it, it it has actually sold out before at the door. <laughs> so okay. So if if you yeah. don't like big crowds, to just skip what I said and stay home. Oh no. <laughs> Just make sure to get your tickets online before you come to the conference. <laughs> mm. I've been up to a couple of things this week. I've been running around doing stuff, uh, meat space stuff. You know, I got some uh, nonprofit work that I do and been like running around. But I managed to get something out at like a very weird time. I, I think I pushed it out like three o'clock in the morning. Uh, mm. Something I'm big on is uh, education, helping people out, uh, especially with their multimedia production. You know, just getting the basic questions answered of, you know, factually. And yeah. a question, it's not always just Linux stuff. Uh, we're doing a podcast, by the way. I know that might come as a surprise to some of you. Like, wait, what? Huh? But we are. And a question that I've seen pop up uh, multiple times throughout the years, and I try to keep an eye on it on the subreddit for our podcasting. People are like, man, I want to learn how to mix a podcast. But, you know, they don't necessarily want to do a podcast, but they want to learn how to mix it. And a good producer is somebody like if you're not going to do all that work yourself, that's somebody you want to be able to find later on. So I've always um, kept a little thing on like archive, like I would export our shows like this show, Linux Gamecast, and put them up. And But I'm not always on Reddit. I'm not addicted to it, you know, so I've missed people asking. And uh, I was like, man, I need a place to put that. So. Um, I'd set up a little page on interfacing Linux and I'm like, here, you can go download this. 
And that, that's what I did, you know, multi-track audio for podcast mixing. This is an episode of Linux Gamecast. If you want it, what is dry multi-track? That is just the audio coming in. Like, just what we're getting everything. If, Jill, if the tree guys were back right now. Oh, yeah. At Jill's house, <laughs> like, while she was talking during the show, you'd hear the tree guys in the recording. If, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I am making noise and stuff that would normally be gated, processed out, all of that is going to be in the files. And uh, that allows people to bring it into their digital audio workstation if they want to use Outdoor, if they want to use Reaper, or like you got psychopaths still using Audacity. Bring it in. Learn how to edit it. Learn how to chop it up. Learn how to clean it up and turn it into a show. So this is going to be episode 599. Now, I brought up archive.org because that's where I've been putting these things for years. Problem with that is there's no way to discover anything on archive.org. Like if you do a Google yeah. search for like, hey, I want, you know, mixing stuff for podcast, you find sketchy websites, you find people wanting you to pay them for their podcast oh. audio. And I'm like, that is ridiculous. Like, no, uh, and that shouldn't be, oh, you know, be the change, be the change. And the problem with archive is, and I had all this stuff on archive, which I still do. They're going to be there uh, forever. There's shows going back past couple of years. If you can find them, good luck. You got to find that one post I did in the show notes from like three months ago. This is something you're going to be able to search for. And initially, I put this back up on archive. Then I went to download it the other day, Joe. Mm, and then uh, the archive file, the full, which is myself, Jordan, Pedro, and the music track, yeah. is about 700 megs, 24 bit, flack, you know, again, just unprocessed. 700 megs and uh, I, I never thought about it because i never went back and downloaded it the first time i did it it took about 16 minutes that's hmm. not too no. bad right I'm like, no yeah it's like <laughs> you know what let them suffer it's not going to cost them anything they can wait it out then i had to download it again to check something and it was like a two-hour download oh uh, yeah that happens sometimes on archive yeah and i'm like <laughs> no that's ridiculous so here's the bonus thing and the reason I'm bringing this up. You can cost me money because I'm hosting these files myself. Mm-hmm. Paying for these out of pocket. Um, you can download these right off the CDN. This is the same CDN that hosts this show. So it'll max out your download. And uh, you can download that 700 meg file in a couple of seconds if you want. And that's going to be at interfacinglinux.com. I think it's the main post right now. And you can just pop that in, play around with it if you maybe... You just want to listen to an uncut episode because, you know, we do live and uncut. Even this show, you can get the live and uncut version of the show. Now, that is processed. It's still the entire show. You know, you get the pre-show, me and Jill talking to like 15 minutes in the beginning. Then you get the show, then all the after show. And a lot Mm -hmm. of people, like they show up for the pre-show and the after show. They're just like, "Eh, whatever, you guys do the show and I'll come back in the after show. Uh, This is effectively that, but just a live recording with, you know, again, no noise gates or anything like that. Go check it out mm. if it's your thing. Nice. Hopefully it'll be of some help. I'm scared to uh, look how much bandwidth has already been consumed. And if I go, <laughs> yeah. if it disappears, uh, it's, or if I disappear, it's because I'm now destitute, because this could be an incredibly dumb idea uh, of charity from your friendly <laughs> neighborhood old man, Ben. We'll find out how that works, <laughs> but hopefully it'll help some people out. Also, I need some people to talk me out mm-hmm. of buying that big, dumb knock to a heat sink for Jack uh, You know oh, the okay. one they made. Yeah. You know that <laughs> big, ginormous, fanless brick. Yes. The um, little AIO, uh, I think it was Art Theron that picked that up. Never really planned on using that thing. You know, I just put it because we got a wish list for the studio. And I just put it on there, just like, uh, I, I wonder, because at the time, we'd never seen a, um, a 120 mil, you know, an, an AIO with just a 120 millimeter fan on it. And I'm like, yeah. I don't even think that thing would work very well. Turns out it worked great. It's been working on the, it started to get a little pump grind on it. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, mm-hmm. if that thing died yesterday, it, 100% it, it has worked. And, uh, but I also have never liked the idea of having a water tank sitting over that Sound yeah, card in there. scary. Yeah. <laughs> that sound card's worth like seven of the PCs. <laughs> That's yeah. around it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm currently in the process of talking myself out of buying that dumb Noctua thing for like, that's silly. I don't know. Maybe. 
Anyway, next week, if I show up with like the dumb knock to thing, don't be Aww. too surprised. <laughs> Let's get into the show proper, though. Uh, first story this week comes mm-hmm. from Fedora Atomic Desktops. Ooh, yeah. that, that, that kind of sounds uh, kind of crazy, it. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's not quite as crazy as you might think. Uh, you know, since Fedora is immutable distros, uh, they're, they're pre-made images. If you don't know, you know, like uh, base systems, you can't modify them with uh, like desktops. You know, you got to have like different spins. You can't just jump in, take Fedora mm-hmm. Silver Blue and turn that into like reasonably or with any amount of ease, turn that into like XFCE or whatever else you want to run. So instead what they do, you know, you can do like minor packages layered on top of the um, immutable image. So that is why you have so many spins of, you know, desktop flavors for these immutable bits. And you know what? Immutable distributions are pretty dope. You know, when you think about like uh, Steam OS, uh, they're good for playing games, surfing the web, watching videos. Great for a system that you're going to set up for like, you know, your parents. (laughs) You don't have to worry about them doing anything crazy to it. (laughs) But uh fedora is going to try to simplify all this and they're like hey we're just going to be doing our own little group of the atomic desktops of the different types you know because silver blue has really blown up in popularity people really yeah, like it, it really has. and it's really mm-hmm. neat uh and you know project atomic's been around for like 10 years uh but here it is it's there i'm excited to see it i've played around with the uh immutable i played around with silver blue and like for yeah. desktop stuff it was fine I didn't have a problem with it. I think I played around with it live one time. Yeah, you did. On the stream. And, uh, you know, I, I just completely blind, never touching it before. And I'm like, I, I get it. Uh, later on, I went back and played with it. And I'm like, could I realistically use this? As, and as soon as you start trying to set up developer tooling, uh, mm-hmm. not, at least for me, that's all I can say. I was like, I just bounced right off that. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But they have their uses. What do you think? I mean, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good news from Fedora, isn't it? Oh, this is abs- absolutely tr- true, Vin. And like you, I had played with Silver Blue, you know, when it came out, because we talked about it here on LWW. And recently, I played, played with Fedora Budgie Atomic. And that is, it was just awesome. It's very similar to running uh, SteamOS on my Steam Deck. I loved it. And, you know, after the Fedora Sway and Fedora Budgie desktop spins were actually created, I knew more would be coming and it would probably get kind of confusing. <laughs> so, and, you know, the cataloging of Fedora spins and unif- unification called Fedora Atomic Desktops, it actually makes total sense to not have confusion in the community about what spin you're talking about and a unified approach to user questions. It just just makes it so much easier for uh, troubleshooting and and community feedback and less confusion i think it was it's it's a great idea and the other thing i noticed ben is it seems we have a new fad or fad in the linux community with fedora atomic desktops that's my (laughs) i'm gonna call them fad fads (laughs) oh wow that was pretty good yeah, I was proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the, the entire thing is completely invalid because right now, um, some desktop environments are not in the atomic variants, uh, like Voxite, which is the XFCE. So until XFCE yeah. is in there, the entire project's moved. I'm like, Bleh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ben has to have XFCE. <laughs> Um, hey, I can make an a, atomic window maker. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I, cool. that's not like the only one. Um, Pantheon and upcoming Pantheon. Cosmic. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple other things that need to get dropped in there. But yeah, Voxite, I guess, would be the big one. The XFC spin. Yeah. That was one of the things I learned on the live stream. Like, can I change the window manager? And it was like, do you got a weekend? Like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I'm glad they're doing that. You know, clear up any confusion because I know people like playing around with it. For me, I, I view like immutable desktop type stuff. Like if maybe you're like hyper into like just being able to not break something. Just yeah. being able to get it back. I think it there's nice. a good use there. For me, like, I look at it as like the Chromebook Linux. You just drop it on a laptop yeah, and give it to true. somebody. And I'm like, 
here you go, yeah. go play with that. Have a fun. I don't think you'd be able to break it, which is yeah. a good thing. Chrome OS is immutable too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it's that type of idea. Like I think for yeah. a lot of us in the audience, pretty, you know, it'd be for maybe for a laptop for your personal desktop and like, I don't know, but I, yeah, I've loved blend OS and vanilla OS. They all bring their own, you know, unique paradigm to mm -hmm. the immutable and yeah. they're, they're great OSs and they become so popular and, and Nix OS, let alone Nix OS. Hey, at scale, uh, we're going to have the very first annual NixCon at scale. So if the, you uh, Arch Nix. users are getting angry, man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're getting upset because people are coming up to them and be like, "By the way, I I, I use Nix." Yeah, like, yeah. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> oh man, uh, everything changes. Speaking of things changing, I was thinking about this in the pre-show. This came at a perfect time because you know the the superb mm -hmm. owl wound down and the internet was looking around and like we need another thing to be unreasonably angry about because we like waking up every morning and spending all day upset on the internet because we're miserable. Well, Aww. good news everybody, here's something for those people to be angry and miserable about. Yes, true. So <laughs> so the open source social networking alternative to X slash Twitter or Zitter as Vin and I sometimes call it, it it's called Blue Sky is now open to everyone and no invitation codes are required now, which is really, really cool. So Blue Sky, if you don't know, is a decentralized social network that it's a lot like early Twitter and was launched in spring of last year. You sign up, you post, you repost, you follow people and view content in your feed, just like you do on Twitter and a lot of the other social network or networking applications. And developers can share their custom feeds with users who can add them to their own content feed. Now, that's something awesome. <laughs> uh, that that you know actually it sets this apart from other uh, proprietary <laughs> applications. And it's really cool also because they have a nice free alternative to tween, TweetDeck called Deck Blue, which I know Vin has been using for a while. And there's just, there's so many cool things. Federation is coming in the future for user-created instances. And Eventually, allegedly, yeah. maybe. Yes, allegedly. That I hope it's coming, yes. And Linux developers could, you know, create their own clients like they have with Mastodon. There's lots of really good Mastodon cl clients that I've used. And yeah, Ven, I noticed it took a minute for the Blue Sky website to open for me last week when I was doing our LWW show post. Yeah, dude, it was struggling. Yeah, you know, it was struggling. It, it really was. It was used to yeah. the 12 or 13 of us that have been using it for the past year. And Yes, I'm hoping this means that they are being inundated with new users. And I think that's what's happening. <laughs> so they had actually, Blue Sky had 3 million users when it was invite only. But I'm sure now that it's open to everyone. Many more users are in the horizon. It's it needs it. Cool. Yeah. It needs it. I've been on Blue Sky for you know a minute, but you know mm -hmm. it's kind of been a, for uh, Linux and tech and open source. It's been a ghost town. I, I'm not going to pretend that it's been anything different. You know, I'd set up uh, the Deck Dot Blue, which is not from Blue Sky. It's uh, another company's made that. You know, it's a third party mm -hmm. application. I don't want anybody getting confused there. Like. It doesn't cost anything, but, you know, you got to link that up. But I've been using that, like, tweet deck of old. That was kind of where I was interested in it because I knew deck blue. And I was like, I want an invitation. I got an invite. And I got all that set up like I have set up on Mastodon. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, I have searches because they have groups that you can search with with uh, Blue Sky. And I'm like, okay, let's set that up. And let's set some, you know, Linux open source gaming. Very few and far between. But... Maybe it's going to grow. I have seen a, you know, people I've known over the years on different social networks uh, and that have followed me have started following me this week. They've just kind of popped up, yeah. like, you know, a couple Same every here. day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's nice. Who knows? Like, <laughs> use whatever you want to want. And if they do actually get around to like federating, I'm like, cool, go for it. Have fun. It's just another social network. And again, I know some people are personally attached to their social <laughs> network. We saw that with like Twitter getting bought. And I'm like, dude. It's a website. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Go outside. Hug your friends. Um, <laughs> oh, 
There is that. Go check it out. Go play with it. You can find, uh, how about, uh, who are you on uh, Blue Sky? I'm easy to find because I got a dumb name. It's just me. Oh, Jill underscore Linux girl, like All I right. am on everything else. Yeah. <laughs> just type in Vin on Blue Sky. Yeah. I, like most social <laughs> yes. networks, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah no, no, named after the diagram guy. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, thanks, Mom. Uh, um, <laughs> next was something I didn't even plan on, um, talking about or making a video about, but I went to eBay and I'm like, eh, I, I think it was already on eBay. And I'm like, I wonder what the uh, capture card used market is. And I just happen to punch in Magewell. I'm like, hmm, mm -hmm. let's see what those are for. Why? Because if you've ever seen the USB Magewell capture cards, you probably only remember one thing about them. The price. Yeah. <laughs> They're ridiculously expensive. Yes. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought one. Because why not? We might as well, right? And uh, yeah. I ended up getting the Magewell USB Capture HDMI, not Gen 1, but the Gen 2. This is the new one. And I was really impressed with it. I wasn't going to do a video on it, but hear me out. Not only is it you're, for video viewers, you can go watch the video over on the Interfacing Linux along with my write-up. This is a professional USB capture dongle. So what does that mean? Like I said, if you're Magewell, that means $299. This is not the only Magewell capture card I have. The other one makes $299 look like a bargain. But for that, you get a nifty USB cable, which is ridiculous. I spent the first bit of the video talking about that USB cable because I'm not joking. Like, I, I, this is not a sponsored post. You know, I just got the OEM version. If Magewell made USB cables, I would pay $10 a pop for those USB cables. That thing is crazy oh you, yeah they would have no interference <laughs> they, they, it's like they're made yeah. out of networking cable like good yeah. networking cable they're uh, <laughs> crazy but uh if for the video viewers you already saw that it's just a block of metal it's a half pound of metal like you can you, you're not gonna be able to hurt it and and like okay it's it was like most other usb capture devices you plug it in on linux it just worked and it did you know it showed up in the mail and plugged it in it worked you used it for a couple of weeks and I just happened to go digging around. I'm like, I wonder if Magewell has any uh, like firmware update utility for this. And that's when I ran across the capture utility. Magewell's naming sucks. They just name stuff like that. You know, that's why this is called the USB Capture HDMI Gen 2. This is just called Capture Utility. This utility is nuts. Mm -hmm. You can update the firmware. You can do hardware cropping. You can lock resolutions you can pick custom resolutions and set individual resolutions you can mute all of your audio you can adjust av sync and clone edids all on the card itself from linux that's a linux desktop native gui that is not awesome. one that is the debian package that you can get there's also an rpm for my brothers and sisters running sent in fedora and all of these configurations that you do for the card are saved to the card like it's static you unplug it and it's all saved till the next time you want to plug it in and you know it does 1080p 60 and effectively anything below that it'll do 720p 120 if you want to do that and it managed to pass my bios test which a lot of capture cards uh usb or anything just fall apart with because you get so many crazy resolutions between being logged into your uh uefi to your boot screen to your grub screen to your boot up screen mm -hmm. and to your desktop <laughs> it yeah. didn't blink didn't blink did the entire thing which you know can be handy if you're doing things like I'm doing, you know, if you need to capture a bio screen. Yeah. Uh, but if you need all those pro features, they are there. You can play with them. They will get your job done. And it's also $299 though, which mm. can be considered a bit expensive, but I got good news for everybody because at the end of the video, if you stuck around and watched and I, there's a three-way mm -hmm. comparison in here too. If you want to see some uh, big buck bunny, screenshots between the Magewell and the Blackmagic Decklink Quad 4K and the EVGA XR1. You can look at the little evil squirrel, a peach, and the <laughs> big buck bunny himself with some yeah. foliage around him in motion because so uh, that's a good thing to put up. Oh, everybody's going to love this. I found one fatal flaw with it, though. Oh, what then? Everybody's uh, <laughs> might be familiar with uh, that. <laughs> Microsoft wireless keyboard. My, uh, <laughs> Microsoft's Sculpt ergonomic mm -hmm. desktop keyboard is deathly allergic to the major well. <laughs> wow. Deathly. Within 30 to 40 seconds of plugging it in, it just quits working completely. 
Huh. And it's a bit of a cascade of failure. Like it'll get to where the key presses are intermittent. Like I thought the yeah. transceiver was finally dying on it or something. Nope, that's all it is. Second, you unplug it. I did not investigate it again, but I just want to make people aware of that. But what I'm getting to is uh, you can pick one of these up on eBay for 60 bucks all day long. Now, if you need something, uh, the main reason I got it is because of the metal housing. And it, if you can brain somebody with that metal housing, you can, th- if you threw that against your wall, it'd stick in your wall. You know, <laughs> if you nice. tap danced on it and kicked <laughs> it across the room, it would look you in the eyes and giggle. Like it mm. doesn't care. And that's really good for your connections for your USB and HDMI. Like there's no flex at the end of the video. I tried to take it apart and I'm like, that's not coming apart. I'm just going to leave that alone, man. Not put the screws back in. That's awesome. Uh, but that's why I got it. Because I just, you, if you need something to plug in, not worry about dump behind somewhere and like never have to worry about it. You know, you can step on it, whatever. It's going to be fine. Also, the gaming angle on that is uh, if you got funky, weird resolutions, because you got, you know, uh, HDMI upscalers for your retro consoles and stuff like that. And previously, I will say the same thing I've always said if you got the money and you can afford it, get a mage well when people ask me that question because it will capture whatever you feed it like you you have tools at your disposal to make sure that happen and you're not going to get that with like an elgato cam link or an avr media or like whatever yeah dga trust me i got more capture cards than you guys have <laughs> this is a special device made for nice. a very particular use case but yeah, if you, you if you want i call it a five dollar milkshake in the video because uh, that's what it is well but, it's so amazing for 60 bucks finn and then yeah. you get software, that awesome software and hardware support. <laughs> you you get awesome. And you get major well support. Um, yeah. I didn't have time in the video to explain real quick. Uh, one of the things is I have another mage well. I have the mage well uh, HDMI quad, which is a ludicrously hmm. same deal, right? <laughs> Not cheap because mage well doesn't make consumer stuff. They just don't. You know, they sell business to business, but they all, you can buy stuff. You know, they don't keep it out of your hands. And I have the Blackmagic Decklink Quad, which I'm using right now. The Blackmagic De- Decklink Quad, I didn't get to use for an entire year because uh, if you watch the video review oh, I did yeah. of that, it took <laughs> 300 plus days for Blackmagic to respond to my support ticket. Yeah. For a one line <laughs> fix to make it work with my Threadripper. Almost a year. It, it, it was genuinely like seven days off of being an entire year later before they got back to the support. And that thing was just in a box. Magewell, on the other hand, I got the Magewell used, so I didn't even, like, I wasn't, you know, the first party uh, buyer from that. I, the one I had, had that super loud fan on it because it was designed to be in a server, you know, an ingestion server. So the fan was just, and you could hear it from across the house. So I needed to wire up a uh, little thing so I could do a fan controller, and I did that in the video. Uh, I emailed Magewell, and I'm like, hey, man, uh, good. Do you give me an idea what size JST connector this is so I can order the thing, you know, just a rando email on them, not a customer or anything. Dude writes me back, tells me about it, says they've updated the product part number. He's like, it looks like you're in the U.S. Here's a link to Mauser to the exact part number. Nice. That's the difference between Magewell and Blackmagic. And that's also factored into that price that you pay. They are legendary awesome. for their support. You know, there you go. Yeah. Uh, snorky mm-hmm. play games. Yeah. So this is cool. This is, uh, Ven-, Ven will show it on screen in just a moment. This is a cool orange and white device called the Flipper Zero Hacking and Pen Testing Tool. And it's actually gone viral on TikTok. I've seen it in a lot of TikTok videos. And it has a new video game module that you can buy that is powered by a raspberry pi of course woohoo and the flipper video game module has actually a raspberry pi 2040 chip which powers the raspberry pi pico and it has an hdmi video output on top which outputs at 640 by 480 at 60 refresh which does seem kind of low but it's pretty good for this low powered device really And also the game module has a handy USB port on the side and the ability to have gyroscopes for games, the gyroscope technology for games, and a GPIO header 
on the front. And what's also really cool, I was thinking about buying one because it can run independently of the Flipper Zero and be used like a regular Raspberry Pi Pico device, but in a handy little case with all the breakouts. <laughs> it's really cool. And there are actually GPIO pins, of course, on top of the Flipper Zero device so the community can build their own modules like the game module the Flipper, Flipper Zero company has made that we're showing off today. And I, I was just really impressed by this. The cute Flipper Zero with a monochrome display that features an adorable dolphin graphic can be purchased for $169. And the video game module is just under 50 bucks at $49. And they don't charge for shipping. <laughs> that was cool. So I'm like, hmm, 50 bucks. <laughs> pretty nice i didn't get a chance to like really look into this too much uh so does it, I, does that just like play your games on like the little screen on the flipper or yeah they weren't really clear about that i'm assuming you have to do it with the hdmi output because mm -hmm. the screen is really 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 low resolution so <laughs> well that, that's, that's what i was kind of thinking about yeah. you remember there was a like single use they only had like one game like the tiger games yeah that the, like you could make something like that I don't oh yeah that. like yeah. the f little football handheld yeah, and tell yeah, yeah, football yeah. and all that yeah that's <laughs> uh, kind of wild man uh that yeah go, go go play with it i've thought about buying one but i don't know exactly yeah. what i do it's just one of those it's like one of those a, i a fun thing to play with yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting to the point where i realize like then you will buy that you will play with it for two hours and it will end up in a drawer then you'll try yeah. to give it away i'm like yes so uh, I'm just going to say my 169, but no, like it's good to see the, you know, Raspberry Pi 2040 showing up in more places. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's even cooler that you can get them. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny because it, it does, it's not really good for playing emulated games because it doesn't have no. enough power. So you have to have that. They, they did say that the, um, you can code in C plus, uh, in actually, excuse me, in C or Python mm. to, create games for this but it didn't say if they play on the screen so <laughs> i don't i don't know on the original you know flipper zero screen hey, if you do know but, leave us a comment on the youtube yeah. video and uh yeah go check it out all this is going to be in our show notes over at linuxgamecast.com that's going to wrap mm -hmm. us up for this afternoon if you like what we do <laughs> hey i want you to go over there hit on that support button and we got a couple of things. We got a Patreon. We've had one of those for a long time. And you get a big bonus, chunky, sloppy thing of extra content each and every week. You get the live and uncut versions of this show. If you can't make the live show and you want to relive it and experience it the same day, but if we put it up on YouTube too about a week later, if you just want to go over there and check that out. Yeah. But you get early access to anything that I'm working on behind the scenes and access to our Discord and a couple other things are show notes. You know, it's just a nice little uh, thank you helping yeah. us out we got libra pay paypal and of course the bitcoins and we got an amazon wish list uh if you pick up something for the show you can send us a note we'll read it We're like hey thank you oh no i have to read this it's always a fun time jordan's got one jill's got one pedro's got one and the uh studio's got one i don't really have one for myself mm -hmm. but the studio's got one so consider that one but we got merch we got an amazon storefront so if you're ever curious about uh what makes all this stuff run there's an itemized list in there that i need to update now I got to put that major thing on there. And of course, humble affiliate bundles. And mm -hmm. if you are one of our beautiful party patrons, thank you. You make sure possible. And that is why you earn our credits. Yeah. Boom. Like our Theron, our, one of our advisors. We have Omegas and our Theron. And our executive producers are Barbara Ant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, <laughs> Chicago Kicks People, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasmia. <laughs> <laughs> and our sea mon monsters, Trug Gills, Baratanuda, Justin, Hakeem, David, and our Death Notes, Turnover, Ogiwan, and Fox Dog, Swine, Piper, <laughs> and our Chairlings. Okay, uh, Jack, Strider. <laughs> the list goes on and on. I, yep, I can't read them. The Chairlings, just two of them. Yeah, <laughs> so I just can't the read them all. <laughs> Hey everyone oh yeah uh by the way like if you ever notice like any errors or anything and like the credits i do those by hand so there's fat yeah. fingering and like uh, old men senior moments in there like send me a note like let me know on social media or in discord be like all right man i'm in the wrong spot or i'm not in there i'm like oops and i'll put you in there. <laughs> right. yeah have a great rest of your week everybody and we will 
catch you next time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.